Welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot of Fisker news to cover in the last few days. Let's just get right to it. Fisker receives continued listing standard notice from the New York Stock Exchange. On February 15th, it received notice from the New York Stock Exchange that it is not in compliance with Section 802.01c of the NYSE listed company manual because the average closing price of the company's stock was less than $1 per share over a consecutive 30-day trading period. The NYSE notice does not result in immediate delisting of the company common stock from the New York Stock Exchange. The next step is for the company to notify the New York Stock Exchange within 10 days of its intent to regain compliance and return to compliance with the applicable NYSE continued standards. They have a six-month cure period following the receipt of the New York Stock Exchange notice if on the last trading day of any calendar month during such cure period, the company has both a closing share price of at least $1 and an average closing share price of at least $1 over the 30-day trading period, ending on on the last trading day of the applicable calendar month. The company intends to remain listed on the New York Stock Exchange and is considering all available options to regain compliance with the NYSE's continued listing standards, including but not limited to a reverse stock split subject to shareholder approval no later than the company's next annual meeting of shareholders. So all this news has been reported on this channel before, but if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and stuff like this won't surprise you next time. The NYSE knows notice has no immediate impact on the listing of the company's common stock, which will continue to be listed and traded on the New York Stock Exchange during the cure period, subject to the company's compliance with other New York Stock Exchange continued listing standards. Furthermore, the notice is not anticipated to impact the ongoing business operations of the company or its reporting requirements with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. So what does this all mean? I'll rewind to a previous video and play the clip. So it's a six-month period followed by an additional six-month extension if that 30 consecutive days does occur. And of course, we now know it has occurred. But that's not all the news. Fisker now has signed four dealer partners in the U.S. with additional signings expected in the coming weeks. Orisman Fisker, Classic Fisker, Long Island Fisker, in addition to the previously announced Mills Auto Group, have all signed on. That covers North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Maryland, New York, and New Jersey at seven locations. Fisker has received interest from over 250 dealers in North America and the rest of the world regarding the new partnership model. Here Here's those guidelines from my last video. Dealers will be required to make a minimum investment, market areas are large, no haggle pricing, sales and service programs for early dealer partners for a period of time. There'll be a dealer council. It says dealers can share service area back of house and administrative functions, likely meaning not all dealerships will have full Fisker service capability. And of course, you got to make your money as a dealership, so there's a certified pre-owned program. But that's not all. Alexa integration is almost complete for the infotainment system. Argus Cybersecurity has taken proactive measures to address cybersecurity concerns associated with internet connected devices, and they are working with Fisker, which resulted in Fisker obtaining security certification for the integration of Amazon Alexa within the Fisker Ocean. What does that mean for drivers? Voice AI functionalities like making calls, sending messages, streaming music, navigating, and controlling various functions, all with the sound of your voice. Voice, and it's coming as early as March 2024. There's also an ongoing problem with Fisker being able to register vehicles. Fisker is only authorized to title and register vehicles in the states of California and Arizona. They're using a third party for all other states. States like Massachusetts have priority because they require registration and permanent plates before the vehicle can operate on the road and be properly insured. And that's straight from the registration department. And here's the guide if you need to contact Fisker for any information regarding your registration. Follow these emails listed on screen for your state and contact Fisker if you have any additional questions. Also regarding the stock, there are two shareholder votes. First, to approve the potential issuance of more than 19.99% of the company's outstanding shares upon conversion of the incremental notes. And second, to approve the amendment giving Fisker the authority to move from 1.25 billion shares to 2 billion shares. As far as software update 2.0, it looks like February 28th is the start of that. So technically, yes, it is a February update, but just barely. There are a few dozen Fisker owners that do have a public beta of 2.0 currently. What have your recent Fisker experiences been like? Let me know in the comments below. And if I missed anything, please feel free to correct me as well. Check out more information on the dealership network here and ride along with me on a Fisker Ocean test drive here. Subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.